Ciao! Welcome to a new class! I'm Giulia and today we talk about basic composition rules. Are you ready? Let's start! Basic composition is a very important topic in photography and understanding composition rules will help you improve your photography regardless of what camera you're shooting with. So these rules can be applied whether you're shooting with a fancy DSLR or with just your phone. So let's see what they are. What is composition? So the aim of composition is guiding the eye of the viewer through the picture and put emphasis on your subject. So here I have three visual examples for you of three of the most used and easiest to use um, rules of composition. So we have the rule of thirds, the rule of odds and symmetry. As you will explore each of these in more details in the next few slides. But basically you can see how these images are well balanced. You immediately understand what your subject is and you immediately, your eye is immediately drawn to the subject. And why is that? Like, how do we make this happen? Let's see. So composition is a set of visual rules. These weren't invented with photography, by the way. Some of these uh, like come from art, like basic art, the Renaissance, even before that. So these rules have been around for centuries, <laughs> thousands of years. Uh, we didn't invent them for photography, but we can use them in photography to guide the eyes of the viewer through our picture and let them stop and focus on the elements that we want them to focus on so that we can take them we can take the viewer on a visual journey through our images these rules of compositions are used to emphasize the subject and obviously to make our image um, aesthetically pleasing because if it's like a <laughs> A punch in your eye, no one will want to look at it. <laughs> but it basically, they also help very much because they tell us where we need to place our subject and where we need to position the props around our subject so that we don't distract from the subject, but we just add to the, to the story. And by doing that, we guide the eye of the viewer through this visual uh, journey that will help us tell the story of our image the way we want the viewer to see it. So in this class, we're covering the basic composition rules. Um, and then we have other class, uh, classes for more advanced composition rules. So here's a list of the basic composition rules. We are going to go through each of these individually in the next slides. The golden ratio, the rule of thirds, you might have heard of some of these um, and I will explain to you how do you, what they are, how to use them and it will all make sense. Let's start with the one of the most important ones, the golden ratio. Um, you might have heard about this again from like art history or something like that because this has been around for forever this is basically um an, a natural rule that describes visually pleasing proportions you can find this rule in everything in nature if you think about the beautiful broccoli or the romanesco broccoli the romanesco cabbage it's got those beautiful spirals and things those fractals, they are based on the golden ratio and the golden ratio is based on that um, Fibonacci number. So it's, you know, if you want to do some research on the golden ratio, it's very, very, very interesting to see how everything in nature ties to this um, aesthetic, aesthetical rule. But basically, in photography, how do we use it? So we want we use this rule when we want the eye of our subject to flow through the picture as you can see it's like a spiral and it's divided in squares and that's why it um, these are visually pleasing proportions so there's a bigger square and this square in the bottom left corner is half the surface area of the bigger square over here and each of these squares it's half the surface area of the previous square 
the most impactful square, which is where we want to put our main subject, is the smallest square. Obviously not this little tiny, tiny one, but like this area here, this rectangular here, um, is where we want to place our main subject. Why? Because if you follow the spiral and the flow of the image, your eye is guided to that square. So you are going to start by placing your subject in that area and then placing your props following the natural curve of the golden ratio. This is a perfect example of how I use the golden ratio. So all my props, as you can see, there's a lot of negative space here. Um, and all of my props are placed following the golden ratio. And all of these props lead my eyes to my main subject, which is one of the three bowls of soup. And the napkin as well helps guiding the eye uh, to that, to those th those three subjects, and, and eventually to my uh, to my main bowl. We use this composition rule. This is very powerful. It's a very powerful composition rule, and what it does in our frame is it adds movement and flow. This composition feels very flowy and natural. It doesn't feel static. And what happens is our eyes keep following the composition. Basically, they get stuck in the spiral and they never leave the frame. And that is something that adds interest to our images. If, our, if the eyes of our viewer are so like involved in the picture that they never leave the frame, but they always go spiraling in, 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 that is a really good thing. That is what you want your viewer to do and to feel. And you're taking them on this visual journey. Another one of the most popular composition rules, you must have heard this a thousand times, is the rule of thirds. What is the rule of thirds? So I'm going to explain it to you maybe once and for all. Um, so the rule of thirds, again, describes visually pleasing proportions and is basically an imaginary grid that divides our image into nine uh, equal rectangle rectangles. Uh, the eyes normally and subconsciously, all of these um, things, they happen subconsciously. It's not like you decide, oh yeah, I'm going to look there, I'm going to look there. No, your eyes do that automatically. It's in our nature to do that. Our eyes are drawn first to these four intersection points where the the lines of the, um, the grid intersect. So that's where your eyes are more likely to stop and focus. So that's where we need to place our subjects. Um, you can find this grid pretty much everywhere in your phone uh, or in your camera or in Lightroom. Um, you activate the grid so that you know exactly where, where to place your, your subject. So for the maximum impact, you want to place your subject either at the four intersections, so either uh, bottom right, top right, top left or bottom left, the four intersections, or another impactful thing is you will place your subjects on the lines. So now this, these two subjects, this is a paella. Uh, obviously they're round, so it's more effective for me to place them at the intersections. So my plate is at the bottom right intersection and the pan is at the top right uh, intersection, creating a diagonal. Uh, obviously, if you have a, a different subject, like something that is maybe long and thin, like, I don't know, like celery stick or something, um, another useful thing that you can do uh, is place it on the line. So just align it with, with the main line. Another rule you might have heard is triangles, as in place elements in triangles. Group of elements count as one point of the triangle. Uh, this is a good example of a composition where I used lots of triangles. <laughs> Did I ever do it? Maybe. But does it work? Yes. <laughs> so... My chocolates, uh, they form a triangle. So there's these two chocolates here at the top. 
that are enclosed in a circle. So this is visually, that is one element. It counts as one element. Our brain does not perceive that as two chocolates. It perceives that at, as one element. Then my second element is, again, this group of chocolates here at the bottom. And my third element of the triangle is this lonely chocolate here on the right. Um, so these three chocolates, they form the three points of one of my triangles. Then I also used my caramel pieces here to form another triangle. Again, doesn't matter that there's two um, caramel pieces here and two caramel pieces here. Because they're so close together and they're in proximity, our brain uh, perceives them as one. So one group, two group, and the third one. So this is another triangle. And then a third triangle is formed by these little cocoa nibs. Again, one here, two here, and three here. So I've got all of these elements that work together in triangles. Um, colors count as points for the triangle. So in this example, the, the orange is a color and it counts as a point in the triangle. The brown is another point is another triangle. Uh, if you have, for example, three bowls of soup with, um, I don't know, parsley, green parsley in the center, and you have one, two, three bowls, the parsley will count as triangles. Um, or if you have like a, a cheesecake and you scatter berries around and you put blueberries around the cheesecake, if you place the blueberries in triangles, that will count as a visual triangle. These triangles shouldn't be super obvious, so that they shouldn't really be like in your face, this is a triangle. They should be a little bit subtle and um, add a little bit of movement and mess. Like th they need to look random, somehow random. They, they don't need, like if I placed, let's say my third, element for the caramel squares if i place them here in place of the choc cocoa nibs maybe that would have been a little bit too obvious um, so when you use the triangles always try and to mix them up so that there's three elements that will do a triangle but that the triangle is not too obvious the rule the rule of odds ties with the triangle uh, rule basically and it says that our brain finds more appealing things that are in odd numbers rather than even numbers. Odd numbers are more pleasing to the eye and they keep the eye interested in our picture. And that's because psychologically, if you have a, um, a sequence of objects or a sequence of numbers, if you have even numbers, you can pair them and that's it, done. Like you pair them and you make order in that sequence of numbers or elements. If you have odd numbers or odd an, an odd number of elements, then what happens is that your brain can't create order because if you pair two of them, the third one is left out. So what do you do with it? It's like just by itself. So and so the brain kind of like gets stuck in this, oh, oh, how am I going to pair, like, how am I going to order this group of things? There's like, there's odd numbers. I can't make sense of it. And by, by getting stuck in this pattern, our brain is wonderful. By getting stuck in this pattern, you're basically just adding interest to your image. And uh, because you want your viewer to wonder, you want your viewer to keep looking at your picture to try and make sense of it, because that's how you, you, make them hungry and you make them curious and you make you involve them in your creativity basically so here i use the three squashes three pumpkins and three um beautiful autumn leaves and again the pumpkins are placed in a triangle because of what we said before <laughs> so you might as well right you've got uh, odd numbers you have three elements so you might as well place them in a triangle Golden triangles. So this is um, a little bit more advanced than the normal triangles. Basically, the golden triangles and leading lines, this is a visual rule that divides our frame into two 
equal parts or alongside the diagonal. So it could be like the diagonal doesn't have to go from top left to bottom right. It could also be uh, going from top right to bottom left. So either either of the two diagonals is fine for this for this rule. And basically the lines converge onto your subjects and they guide the eye through the picture. So you want to place your subject at the, your main subject at the intersection between the main diagonal and these two little lines that divide the frame into the top square, bottom square, uh, sorry, top triangle, mid uh, bottom triangle and these two bigger triangles. So visually these need to be uh, balanced. The elements that are in each of these triangles need to be balanced. And you want to place your main subject at the intersection of these lines. So I placed my main uh, macarons here at the bottom intersection, but I could have placed them just as well in the top intersection here. That's a, totally a creative and personal choice. But as you can see, my other main props are placed on these lines that divide the frame into the other triangles. So my bowl of raspberries, it's got a lot of visual importance here uh, because I want the viewer to know that these macarons are raspberry flavored. So this is a very important piece of my story. Therefore, it's placed on the line. And these other little guys over here, down here, raspberries again on the, on the line. And my other macarons are placed on the diagonal. So what happens here in this frame is the eye of my viewer comes into the frame over here because this is where my visual diagonal starts. So the eyes come through here, looks at this, then sees this, and then it's guided by this guy is guided to look over here. So my eye comes in, sees, sees this, then sees this, and this guides it here. And it's like, oh, raspberries, that's interesting. And then it comes back and it comes back down here and it's guided by this guy and by my um, napkin over here. It's guided all the way down to my subject. And then what happens is, hint, hint, here, the mint leaf, points at my other two raspberries down here. So the, the eye just goes through the whole journey and looks at the whole picture. That is the aim of composition, basically. And here is another example of a triangle. So we've got the three mint leaves here that form a triangle. As I mentioned before, a triangle can be uh, made out of colors. So in this case, there's a, a triangle of colors, like my mint leaves make a triangle. So that's also visually pleasing and it's adding a little bit more interest, especially because green is a pop, like it's a contrasting color uh, against the red. Now, symmetry is another rule. Um, you might see that with the rule of symmetry, your image have a more static feel, which is absolutely fine. It depends on the storytelling. It depends on the story that you want to tell. But basically the, um, the symmetry rule says that you trace a, an imaginary, obviously these are all imaginary lines. You trace an imaginary line in the middle of your frame, uh, in the middle of your picture. And the, the left part needs to be symmetric to the right part, or the top part needs to be symmetric uh, and mirror the bottom part of your image. So this can work top bottom or left right, the rule of symmetry. Um, but basically it needs to be balanced visually. So obviously this is a perfect example because it's, um, it's, a, it's a, a chalice, I guess. <laughs> it's a chalice of uh, mango sorbet. It was so delicious. Um, but yeah, by placing it right straight in the middle, I was able to give my composition this clean and tidy and static and imponent and important look to my subject. Because symmetry 
and placing your subject in the center says, hey, I'm important, I'm the king. So uh, your eye visually feels that importance. This is another good one, the frame in the frame. I love this one personally, um, because obviously having a frame in the frame, <laughs> as the word suggests, um, puts emphasis on your subject and adds extra visual, visual interest, basically. Also, you add depth and layers to your frame. Um, so by just placing this little piece of cloth, this isn't even a napkin, <laughs> it's just like a little piece of fabric, um, I was able to isolate my subject from my more distracting background, because um, obviously my background has a, a pattern, so it's got all these beautiful natural leaves and this green color. By placing this solid color frame on top of the background and my subject on there, I was able to isolate the subject from the main background. If I placed the ball directly onto the leafy background, it might have been a, a little distracting. Um, your eyes wouldn't have been able to make as much sense. But like this, it's like, bam, oh, okay, I know exactly and instantly what my subject is and I can isolate it from the background. This composition can be a little bit static, especially if you use it uh, like me, where you place the frame exactly in the center of the frame. This was done on purpose because I wanted this image to be as minimalistic as possible um, and as graphic as possible. However, you don't have to do it like this. You can place it into diagonals and add a little bit of movement to your frame. Um, also, you can break the, the symmetry. You can break the frame by using little bit of mess, like crumbs or seeds or like leaves, uh, herbs and everything. And by placing your subject not exactly in the middle, but by placing it on one of the, uh, one of the thirds, on my left third, I was able to break some of that symmetry and to break some of that um, um, minimalistic, uh, static feel um, to add a little bit more interest. Ha! Huh. Negative space. You must have heard this a, a, a few times. What does it mean? What is negative space? Negative space is anywhere in the frame where there is nothing or there isn't anything of interest. Uh, so obviously there is something in the space around my subject. There are seeds and there's this nice texture background, uh, but there is nothing of real interest. All the interest in this picture is here in the bowl and basically on this napkin and around the bowl. So I'd say in this um, rectangular and the bowl, Everything else around here is negative space. And it's very important for a few reasons. One is because negative space creates breathing room for the eyes, especially if your subject is a little bit messy and crowded. You can see there's a bit of mess here. There's lots of textures, lots of colors. So there's lots going on here. Your eyes need a little bit of breathing room. They're like, oh, take a break from all the overload information, <laughs> overload of information that's uh, concentrated here. They take a break from that. And by doing that, they have energy to then go back to the mess. It's like having a messy room and <laughs> like a tidy corner. <laughs> you kind of like want to go in the tidy corner to <gasps> just take a breather so that you can go back into the mess. <laughs> But also another thing that negative space does is because it's all empty around it, your eyes are automatically drawn to the subject. So having negative space actually emphasizes the subject rather than because a lot of um, a lot of my students comment that, oh, but the subject is so small in the frame that it's like lost. Yes and no. And mainly no. It's because it's the only important thing in the frame, it doesn't really get lost. It, it gets emphasized because there's nothing else for the eyes to focus on. So they're forced to go and focus um, 
on that subject. Obviously, it reduces clutter and it good, it's good for text. So obviously, this one is um, an image that I shot for a magazine. And obviously, all this negative space uh, was filled with text and the recipe for this uh, blueberry smoothie. So negative space, not only is it good for the eyes, but it's also useful if you want to put uh, some copy there. You might say, obviously, space for uh, for a recipe or something, but also like just a fun quote, like, I don't know, a smoothie a day keeps the doctor away, you know, something fun for your blog, for Pinterest. Uh, um, you can put graphics here. So it's also something to keep in mind um, if you want to use your images for a purpose rather than just, you know, to to make something pretty. So repetition is another rule that is very powerful and very easy to use. You might recognize this image from the golden ratio. Um, but basically, repetition is adds a sense of security and comfort in your viewer. Therefore, it makes it pleasing and calming. And like you, the viewer feels like, oh, okay, I know where I am. I know what I'm looking at. I like this picture. It makes me feel very calm. And because it basically you're creating a visual pattern. Here I repeated circles. So my repetition pattern was circle, circle one, five circles here. And by doing that, the eye knows what to expect because the pattern puts, it doesn't have, like the eyes don't have to work as hard because you're repeating the same shape over and over again. So they can focus on other things like the flow of the image or the colors or, or like the textures of the image. So this is another very powerful um, visual pattern. And you can repeat just about anything, shapes, colors, textures, elements. Again, here I repeated not only the circles, but also the colors, because there's three reds and four greens. And I repeated the texture because obviously there's um, cheese. So there's four cheese textures and four uh, green, like kale textures. So th these are all um, elements that repeat. Now, can we mix all these composition rules or do we have to be so like technically perfect and stuff? No, actually it's really good to mix composition rules now that you've you've got a, an overview of some of the basic composition rules. I encourage you to mix them actually. And uh, this, um, again, you might recognize this image from the triangles. This image doesn't just have uh, the rule of triangles. Actually, this image has pretty much almost all the rules um, in it. It took me about three hours to create, just you know, so that you know, but basically, so as well as the triangles, which, which I uh, already illustrated, this image follows the golden tr uh, triangles, sorry, the um, golden ratio. So it comes, the spiral starts from down here and it goes and back to my main chocolate. So uh, it starts from the bottom right corner, follows this guy, then this guy, then goes around here, around my um, orange piece of paper here, and then comes back and circles back to my main chocolate. So I can apply, like this is also a golden ratio uh, composition. Also is a <laughs> rule of third composition because my main chocolate is on the top left intersection of the grid. So there's that. Um, what else can I find in here? Well, <laughs> if you look, oh, well, obviously there's the uh, repetition because, you know, chocolates. So we have different elements uh, that are the same element, just repeated. Um, so there are a lot of, and golden triangles as well. Yes, because if you draw a, a diagonal over here from this corner, from the top left corner to the bottom right corner, then these two chocolates here and these pieces of caramel, they fall on that line over there. And, and this is a, a, the, the exact intersection. So the triangle will be going 
if you look at the pointer of the mouse, uh, just from like that and there. So that's the top triangle. And my main chocolate is placed at the intersection, while this one is placed on the other um, side of the triangle. And then if we go down, 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 these guys, these three, this group of three guys are placed on the other um, triangle line. So you can use the golden triangles here as well. Oh, I just noticed that. Great. <laughs> <laughs> so there are some rules to mixing composition rules um so try and avoid clutter so they need to make sense these rule, composition rules they need to make sense together um and they need to complement each other so in this image you don't really like <laughs> i just noticed the golden triangles now as i was explaining it to you um, because it just complements all the other composition rules that uh, that I used here. And the triangles complement the golden ratio, which complement the rule of thirds. And there is an, it doesn't feel forced. It feels pretty natural and pretty casual. Always try and keep these composition rules as random as you possibly can. They don't make them super obvious because uh, that will give it away. And one of the main things, always break the rules. Um, as in, now that you have all of these concepts and you know all of these basic composition rules, don't be afraid to just go, you know what, screw it. I'm not, I'm not gonna put my chocolate in the, following the rule of thirds. I'm just gonna do it my way and I'm gonna put it, I don't know, somewhere in the corner, that's fine. So that's also fine. As long as it's visually pleasing. I encourage you to experiment with all of these different composition uh, techniques. So that's all for today. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Ciao.